Hello and welcome to RC Model Reviews. Now you know that I've looked at the Tyrannus. I really like the Tyrannus radio and the way it talks to you. And welcome to Tyrannus. See, isn't it lovely? And it's got heaps of functionality. It's got a really good build quality. It's just a really nice radio. It's, it's the radio that I've been using almost 100% now because it just works so well. And Free Sky sent me this one. I, I acknowledge that, dis disclose that. They sent me this one to test out and to review and it didn't have any of the problems that some of the other radios have reported. Some people have said they've had problems with the gimbals, they don't centre properly, and, uh, but I didn't encounter that with this radio. Now, I like this radio so much that I saw, when I saw that Hobby King had some in stock, I immediately ordered one because, well, for a start, you know, if one's good, two's better, but for another reason, because I know that when manufacturers send me stuff to review sometimes, obviously they're going to take extra care to make sure that what I get is absolutely perfect. Now, not all manufacturers do that, some don't, some do. I don't know if FreeSky do it, I think, I don't think they do, to be honest. Um, I think they just grab stuff and fire it off to me because, you know, they know that if there's something wrong, I'm going to tell people. Now look, as I say, this radio, love it, love it, beautiful. So I went out and I bought another one from Hobby King. And I thought, well, this will give me a chance to look at if they made any changes since that one, which is probably an early one. I don't know, has it got serial numbers? No. Yes, it has. The serial number is 139A01, and this serial number is 1286A01. So there's been quite a few made in the meantime. So I thought, eh, what have they done? How have they changed this? So when I got it, some things I noticed, ordering from Hobby King, first of all, it didn't come with a receiver, but that's okay, they say that, and it didn't come with a charger. So if you want to charge that, um, nickel metal hydride battery, I think there's a charging circuit in there, we'll have a look, but I think there's a charging circuit, so you just plug in your wall wart and away you go. Now, so there's no point in providing one, because different countries have different power outlets and things, so I guess that's not a silly idea. So I found that um, it, when it arrived, it was actually turned on, but of course the battery wasn't plugged in. I suspect they turn it on so that you check to see if the battery's plugged in, otherwise people would go, oh no, it doesn't work. So I plugged in the battery, checked the voltage, it's good voltage, started to set it up as you do, because you need to set up time zones, time data, all that sort of stuff, you know, from, from scratch. I got to the point where I was changing the channel order, and I'm doing a video on this later, um, but not with this particular radio, and the backlight started to flash. I thought, eh, it's not supposed to flash, what's going on here? Flashed a couple more times and then it died. My rad this new radio's dead. It went for a total of about four minutes and died. And if I turn it on now, nothing. Totally dead, no backlight, no CPU, nothing. Um, so, that's not very good, and I must say I'm not at all impressed. Uh, of course it has come halfway around the world, but then so did this one. And I am a bit concerned. Now maybe it's just the loose plug inside. What I'm going to do, because obviously there is a warranty, but the price to send this all the way back to Hobby King, for example, is just about the price of a new radio. So one of the things when you're buying from China, you've got to be careful. If you're buying cheap stuff, and it's all, I've always said this, buy cheap stuff, that's fine, low cost items, if they're bad, you can throw them away. And what you lose, you'll make up on future items where you get good stuff really cheap. If you're buying something more expensive, and I mean, this is a $170 radio, then you've got to be prepared to realize that if it doesn't work, you may be completely out of luck. Because, you know, as I say, to send this back is going to cost me over $100 New Zealand to send it back with track and trace. And then I have to wait for Hobby King to acknowledge the receipt, and then they have to fart around and because these are all on back order it'd be months probably before I got a replacement so meh I've got nothing to lose by pulling this apart and trying to fix it myself and it'll make a good video I suspect and so yeah so I thought I'd give people a heads up maybe as I say if there's going to be a dud I will get it you can guarantee it you know you can have really really good products and if there's one dud in a thousand or ten thousand it's going to end up on my desk because I'm just unlucky like that but it's good for you because you get to see um, at the moment we have a 50 percent failure rate but I'd like to hear from you if you've ordered a Tyrannus you've got a Tyrannus recently especially from Hobby King because sometimes these things are in batches if there's a problem and it's specific to a batch then um, other people who've got theirs from Hobby King may have encountered something similar oh, Chances are, though, I've just got a bad batch. Now, I showed you the build quality is really good on these radios. They use brand name parts, and it's really well designed, really well put together. But, I mean, let's be honest. Anything can fail. That's why you have BMW service dealers. That's why you have Mercedes service agents. That's why, you know, even the top 
brands of RC, you have Futaba service centers, JR service centers, because it doesn't matter how much effort you put into design, how carefully you select your components, how thoroughly you test things, at some stage, bits will fail. And that's beyond the control of the manufacturer. So what I'm going to do is have a look at this. Let's have a look and see if we can fix it. It'll be another video because I don't have much time just this morning, but I thought I'd as I say, give you a heads up. I shall tear it down, we'll have a look, see if I can track through the fault, find out what's wrong with it, and maybe it's a good test to see, well, I don't know, maybe Free Sky will um, send me a replacement, <laughs> because I don't think Hobby King are going to, and I, to be honest, should they? No, because they didn't make it, they did sell it, but they've got no obligation to send a replacement unless I send this back, and I simply, it's not economic to send it back. So there you go, maybe Fresco, when I find the fault, I'll contact Fresco and see if it's a faulty process or something like that. Maybe they'll just shoot me a new one. Maybe they'll shoot you a new one if you're in the same position. Who knows? Okay, well, I was having a quick look at the new Tyrannus, poking around inside, checking out some voltages, and wouldn't you know it, the damn thing has started working again. And that is really about the worst thing that can possibly happen when you're trying to track down a fault. Now, it's working, I haven't been able to get it to fault again but it was definitely faulty before. It's, uh, it's such a worry when that happens because you can't trust this radio, this radio. I could not fly a model with this radio because who knows when it's gonna stop again. And that's you know, a real worry. Also, I can't use it to fault find because I've done some of the basics. I've basically checked for dry joints, loose connectors, that sort of thing. And that, that was all fine. There was no physical aspect. And if I tap this now, it's still working just fine. It won't stop like it did before. And uh, I've tried a bit of heat and cold. That doesn't make any difference. So. Whatever it was is not faulting at the moment, and that means, you know, what can I do? There's nothing. You can't find a fault that isn't there when you're looking for it. So it makes the radio worse than useless. I can't use it because at any stage it could stop again and cause the loss of a model, I'd injure somebody, who knows? So what we have is $170 worth of plastic and electronics that I can't use. I can't send it back because it's too expensive to send it back. I, it would be cheaper to buy another one than to send it back. Um, you know, it's a worry, but it's the nature of the beast with these things. So I'll keep having a play around inside, see what I can find. Maybe something will, uh, something will occur again. I'll catch it in a faulting condition. But in the meantime, I can't do a fault finding video because there's no fault and I can't use it because there is a fault. Ah! So am I telling you you shouldn't buy a Tyrannus? No, I'm not. I still love the radio, as I said. The problem is that it doesn't matter what you make, there are going to be duds. I mean, they've got the TBS video receiver the other day. It was a dud. Now, I know that, you know, they make good stuff because I'm using some of their other stuff. I've got the little board in my Fat Shark Dominators. Brilliant. Works lovely. And sometimes stuff just breaks. And sometimes it's beyond the control of the people who put stuff together as to whether the components they're using work or not. I mean, the electronic components fail. It's a fact of life. And in the case of the Tyrannus, the one I bought from Hobby King, something has failed, but it's failed intermittently, which, as I said, is just the worst possible scenario. So I don't know. I'm just going to have to leave that radio on and hope it faults again. I'll leave it on the bench with all the gear hooked up and hopefully it'll fault again. And when it does, or if it does, that will give me some clues as to where to look. Otherwise, the only real way is to replace all the electronics and Basically, that's a new radio, which I don't think I'm going to get unless I send the old one back and that's not economic. So, may have done my $170 plus shipping. Bugger. If you like this, thumbs up. Stay tuned. Bye for now.